Welcome, I'm Rina Agarwal, Robert E. McDonough Professor of Finance and Director of the Georgetown Center for Financial Markets and Policy. The center provides thought leadership for global finance. We believe in excellence in research to impact practice and policy. In addition to the traditional areas of finance, the center is doing a lot of work in newer areas like FinTech and ESG. A very important part of our mission is to cultivate students to become principled leaders with a global mindset to be in service to business and society. March is Women's History Month and the Georgetown Center for Financial Markets and Policy has organized a number of events to mark this month. Today, we are delighted to start a Women Leaders in Finance and Business series. Georgetown students will interview some amazing women leaders. The recording of these interviews will be posted on the center's website. The center's second set of activities are going to be around career and networking events for our women students. And the third set of activities includes academic presentations on finance related research focused on gender and diversity issues. You can find out more about the center's activities by visiting our website. Now, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce someone who's truly inspiring. We are delighted to have Mary Callahan Erdos kick off our Women Leaders in Finance and Business series. Let me start with the most important part of Mary's introduction. She earned her math undergraduate degree from Georgetown and is a member of Georgetown's board of directors. Mary received her MBA from Harvard University. She is the chief executive officer of JP Morgan Chase's Asset and Wealth Management. The bank manages $3.4 trillion and her team consists of more than 20,000 people all over the world. She serves on the firm's operating committee. That's the firm's most senior management team. Mary is routinely listed on Forbes and Fortune's list of 100 most powerful women, Barron's 100 most influential women. She serves on several boards including the US China Business Council and also the Robin Hood Foundation of New York City. Uh, just to be clear, this is not the trading platform uh, that has been in the news lately. Mary, we are most grateful to you for your support that you've always provided to the Georgetown Center for Financial Markets and Policy and your many contributions to Georgetown University. We are absolutely honored to have you speak today. Now I'm gonna hand over to two of our terrific students, Anastasia Nesterova, an undergraduate student in Georgetown College, and Lydia Kikamdawis, an MBA student in our McDonough School of Business. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mrs. Erdos, for joining us today. Um, we are really happy to speak with you, especially on International Women's Day. My name is Lydia Kickham Dawes, and I am a second year full time MBA student here at the McDonough School of Business. Before business school, I was working in operations for Credit Suisse for a few years and decided to pivot more into the supply chain realm. And post MBA, I will be joining PepsiCo in Dallas, Texas, in their global procurement department. So I'm very excited about that. In the business school last year, I served as a student ambassador and as the co-president of the Black MBA Association. And now I'll pass it off to Anastasia to give a little bit about her background as well. Thank you, Lydia. And thank you so much, Ms. Erdos, for your time for the interview today. Um, my name is Anastasia and I'm an undergraduate, undergraduate student at Georgetown College studying computer science with minors in mathematics and French. 
I'm also currently involved with the Business School Center at Georgetown, where I'm currently working on a finance related project. I'm assisting in research related to mutual funds and ESG data. Super impressive by all. And I think, uh, first of all, thank you so much for having me. Rena's introduction is uh, should have been more about her than it is about uh, anything else. She has made such a difference in Georgetown and the way that we think about the business school and everything that we do in business in general. And I am so proud every time she asks me uh, to do something. It's my most exciting time. And I just... Um, it's just really exciting to see all the change that she's made uh, in the university and across everything globally. So, um, so thank you both for having me, and uh, and I look forward to a great discussion. Thank you. So, um, I'll kick it off with the first question, uh, Miss Erdos. You graduated from Georgetown with a degree in mathematics. Um, we were hoping you could tell us a little bit about your career path after you graduated from Georgetown and your transition from mathematics to finance. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you're majoring in computer science with a minor in math and in French. I wasn't able to pull off all of those things, although I also had a minor in French, so we have a lot in common. And um, uh, But it sounds like you're much more on top of things than, than I was. I, I want everyone to know out there that when you are getting towards the end of the four years of college and you say to yourself like, well, what do I wanna be when I grow up? And what job am I supposed to have? I want you to know, and times were different back then, but I did not have any idea what was gonna do, what I was gonna do until March of my graduating year. And I was lucky enough to get um, an uh, um, analyst position on Wall Street in one of the training programs. And I knew absolutely nothing because because we don't get real, real world application when you're a math major or a computer science major. You get you, you don't learn about balance sheets and Excel spreadsheets. You learn about much more complicated things. And so then you need to figure out how you're going to have real world application. So when I got to Bankers Trust in my first year as being an analyst, I looked around the room and I swear I, I could convince myself that everyone else was a thousand times smarter than me. I was never going to catch up. How did they all already know? this whole thing of Microsoft Excel and they could whiz around the spreadsheets. And um, and so I just dove in head first and asked a lot of questions and was never afraid to ask questions. And within about three months, I found myself as like the go-to person of everyone coming and asking how to work that ex Microsoft Excel and how to create these spreadsheets. And of course, again, I didn't know what a balance sheet was. I didn't know what an income statement was. I didn't even know how companies generated revenues and then profits and net income. And so the whole thing was news, new news to me, um, but I dove in, I gave it my all, and it just goes to show you that you know hard work and really becoming a subject matter expert in something will take you along the way because all bosses are looking for is for somebody to apply themselves really well, probably Lydia, like it was for you at Credit Suisse, like they could see that you applied yourself very deeply and, and expertly. And then they thought, oh, what are we going to do? This woman is fabulous. And then you said, I'm so fabulous. I'm going to Georgetown Business School. So, um, but that's what a boss is looking for. They're looking at someone who can take something and go very, very deep and become an expert and then be able to do other things. And so uh, from there, I went on to uh, Harvard Business School, which I was super fortunate uh, to get into. And then I had a small stint at Paramount Pictures um, as a business analyst where the most fun thing was going to the canteen for lunch and scouting out if I could see any actors or actresses. Um, but then I went back to my desk and ran regressions on DVD sales uh, after a movie came out, things that people don't even understand what a DVD is today. So, And then I found myself uh, here and at J.P. Morgan, uh, it's just been a really special um, road I've gone down, never knowing that I would end up where I am now. Um, but each step of the way, working for a really great firm that gives you lots of opportunities to do different things. And if you excel, someone will spot it, help you, and move you along to the next thing. And so while it's equally great to work at small entrepreneurial firms. I think it's important to remember that there's something about these big institutions and these big training programs and everything that they have going for them, that they give you a very wide variety of things to learn from. And then you can pick your spot where you go super deep. And then the opportunities 
really there for you to make the most of. So um, I've been very fortunate and I've been here ever since and never looked back. That's awesome to hear. Thank you, Ms. Erdos. It seems like you've had an amazing career in finance and it seems like you've had, you know, breadth and depth in numerous industries. So it's happy to hear about that. But one question that we do have is, you know, what are the biggest deterrents for women in finance? We know that you helped launch the Women on the Move um, organization at J.P. Morgan Chase. So we'd like to hear how that organization helps uplift women at work. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, you ask like, what are the impediments to women? I would, I would first start with like, what are the impediments to women um, going, you know, for the long distance in the workforce in general? And for better or for worse, the, 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 the statistics uh, will show that women can fall out of the workforce during the times of when they're trying to raise young children or the times where they're trying to care for elder parents. And those are two things that women do sometimes more often uh, than men. And so it disproportionately causes that sort of fallout from the workforce. And that's a crunch time where it's really hard to juggle lots of things, right? I remember having three girls, little uh, young ladies under the age of five, three under the age of uh, six actually. And it was super stressful time. And yet the firm really sort of adapted and adjusted and um, tried to figure it out with me so that they didn't lose me. I didn't lose faith in the organization. And I learned a lot personally from that time period of like how if other people are going to flex for you, you better flex for other people. And how do you do that? And so we used to have this program where we would bring all the senior women from around J.P. Morgan Chase to uh, headquarters once a year. And we'd have a big, you know, whatever, great couple of days together. And we talk about all the, the issues. But but that doesn't really address what's happening around the whole world in different countries and at different le levels of the organization. And so we said, wait a second, let's turn this on its head. Let's take women on the move. Let's take the senior women from the, from the center of the company and let's go out on the road. And so we'd go around the world and we'd spend time in the Tokyo office. We'd spend time with the branches or across the country. We'd go out and we'd hear the issues. And what you hear are all the different things in different local jurisdictions and how things are run or gosh, they didn't even give us you know, time uh, when I needed time off to go take some test or do something. And so you come back and then you can make the policy changes at the middle. So it's not senior people just talking to senior people. It's going all the way through um, the ranks of the organization. And so that's been a really important part of, I think, how we've created so much um, diversity here at J.P. Morgan Chase, because we work really, really hard on it. And we try to find those pinch points and try to help through those moments and make sure that we're here, we're here to help. I think the other thing that's, that's important, maybe not for the people who are coming out of uh, college or business school, but later in life, there are times where you just say, I'm, I'm going to take time off. I'm going to do something else. I'm going to go do a non-for-profit job, exit the whole for-profit world, or I'm going to take time off to raise a family, whatever. How do I then get like back in? And so we also started something called the reentry program, which was to say, like, gosh, you were great at what you did a couple of years ago. And by the way, the world hasn't really changed that much. So maybe, you know, we use different programs or we have different ways of doing things faster, easier. We have bots that help us to do things, but it shouldn't be overwhelming or daunting. And so let's help those women come back into the workforce in a reentry fashion. Uh, we used to open it up to um about 10 people. Now we are up to a hundred a year. We, we usually get about a thousand applications for that. This just during COVID, we got 2000 applications for those 100 spots. Super um, exciting that so many people want to come back, but all those things are just trying to help people to say, look, careers are long, they're varied and whatever we can do to be able to help through the times where it just feels uncomfortable or like things are out of whack and not really in balance, not that life is ever really in balance. I'm sure neither of you feel that when you're in the middle of tests and crunch time and all of that, but somehow it, somehow you, you, you know, you put your strength and your muscle into one thing at a time and then you go back. And so you can, you can have all those things. You just can't have them all at the same time. And so that's what we try to do here at the firm. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, 
And so taking into consideration these um, challenges and, and various steps that you've taken throughout your career, um, why do you think women should consider a career in finance? Well, I, I didn't, I never considered a career in finance. I just considered like finding a job. And then I found myself in finance. And I think finance has this sort of term of, you know, Wall Street and all about the numbers and all about, and really it's, it's just, it's so much more than that, right? It's the underpinning of the whole economy. It's the way that money moves around, right? And so I am obviously biased because this is the industry that I'm that I'm in. But I mean, I think everyone should be in finance for at least some part of their life, particularly in their young life, where you say, how do I get the understanding of like how a company works and how do you make revenues and how do I understand what an entrepreneur has to do in order to be successful and how do big companies work and how do they get money in order to then invest money? How do you borrow money? Like, how does the whole thing fit together. And so finance is all of those things. And you can have little pieces of, of insights into those worlds, depending on what part of finance you work in um, or, or great ones. And, and a firm like the big firms that exist uh, on Wall Street and in other places, they're geared to, to serve big global audiences. So when you join a big firm like that, you can work in their New York headquarters, you can work in the Paris office, you can work in the Shanghai office, you can, you can find yourself volunteering to want to go take a chance in another part of the world. It's a little bit um, like the programs that we have uh, where we have exchange programs and we go abroad. So just think about that in your life and, and you know your freedom to be able to do those kind of things. Think about the opportunity to meet all some of the most interesting people in the world. You get to meet with um, heads of central banks and sovereign wealth funds and foundations and endowments and entrepreneurs who founded tech companies and big CEOs who do things. And you get at a very young age, you get this like whole picture of the world. And then you can find the thing that you might want to narrow in on, the company that you may want to start on your own. But I feel like it's such a great grounding for all of those things. And so I would encourage everyone to at least think about it and not not don't don't shy away from it because you think to yourself, well, you know, I'm not like uh, Lydia or Anastasia. I don't have the mathematical background or the business background. That's okay. That's okay. There's a lot of different ways that you can get exposure within a big financial firm. And I, I just, I think it's, I think it's really helpful to the development of a, of a career. I definitely agree. Once I started with Credit Suisse, I knew I just wanted to work in operations, but I was exposed to, you know, all sides of the financial off or financial industry and, you know, front office, back office, mortgage-backed securities. So I think it was a great foundation for me while I was applying to business school. Um, and of course, you were once in our shoes as an undergraduate student and an MBA candidate. And in both times, you were either like, you know, one woman who was pursuing your degree or one of a few women pursuing an MBA. So what career advice would you offer to Georgetown students as they navigate their internships and full-time recruitment? And is there anything that you wish you would have known when you were in our shoes? Those are great questions. Um, so career advice, um, you're gonna have lots of different jobs. So don't stress that the one thing that you're applying for is like gonna define your whole life. You're gonna, you're gonna have lots of different experiences. So make sure that you find a company that has the values that you do, that has that same gut feel is very hard during COVID. Think about the think about the students who are trying to figure out what college to go to. Very different than when you chose Georgetown, either undergrad or graduate, right? You went, you walked the campus, you had interviews and you said, yeah, like this feels right, right? There's something about just absorbing it yourself. No one can tell you what school is great for you. You just have to feel it yourself. That's the same thing with a job. So it's a little harder right now, but as you work through it, just try and get a sense of who the people are. Can I see myself working with those people? Can I see myself, you know, walking to the coffee shop with those people as I have a break and enjoying it? And so that, that's that got to feel right. That gut instinct has to feel right. The The what you do is sort of less important. Because when you get into that first job or that second job or whatever it is, it's all about making the most of it. It's all about becoming a subject matter expert in whatever they give you, right? And so they can give you the most simplest 
simple of tasks and you say to yourself, like, maybe this is beneath me or maybe like I shouldn't be doing this. And why did I go to college for this? Or why did I go to business school for this? And the answer is no, 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 nope. Take whatever task they give you and be the be like the go to person. Nobody else can do that task better than you. And the second someone sees that you have that ability to do that they will pick you up and pull you through that organization and ask you to do many, many, many more things. And it's all about defining whether you can be an expert in something and no mistakes, you know, first in, last out on some of those things. Again, not like from a time, uh, face time anymore. I mean, that's one of the great things about what has happened in today's world. So all the horrible things that have happened with COVID and Zoom and the like, there's a lot of positive th- th- positives that have come out of it. Like, oh gosh, we can work flexibly. We can do work after we go for our workout and then we can actually do it in the comfort of our home and I can be just as productive and I can do, right? So there's, there's all these things that you can do and you can do them better than anyone else. You're much more advanced than a lot of people that you'll work for and you'll show them, gosh, I could do this much more efficiently. Actually, I could eliminate these four steps. Let me just help you do this. And so again, not just doing the tasks that they ask you to do, but doing it the best you possibly can. It'll, it'll just, it'll take you so far and don't ever think, well, I don't know how to do that thing. So maybe I'm not right for the job, but by definition, you don't know how to do the thing because you're not in the job. You're not supposed to know how to do the thing. That's why we're asking you to start the job. And so have that confidence that like, I'm not supposed to already know how to do it. I'm going to get there. They're going to teach me. And I'm a fast learner because I'm a Georgetown grad. And like, there's nobody better in the world who's going to be able to do this job than me. Thank you so much. That was definitely um, definitely an inspiring uh, message to hear. Um, and so along that line, as we celebrate Women's History Month, what, what gives you the most hope moving forward? Gosh, you know, I, I the, wor- the world continues to, to change. And again, 2020 was um, maybe major turning point in how we think about the world. But I do... I do see the way that we have changed to be more flexible in how everything is done, that that will change the world for the better, but it'll especially change the world for women for the better. And I, I just, I think it opens up all sorts of avenues of how we do things. I also think it gives us all that great equalization. We're all the same size square on a screen, right? There's no head of the table anymore. There's no like back row. There's a, we're all equal voices and whatever we have to contribute to the task at hand or the, you know, the volunteering, the advice, the, the policy thinking, whatever it is that we're asked to do, it's all coming from right here. It has, it's irrespective of gender or background or, you know, how, whatever part of the world we grew up in, it's just about what's up, what's up here. And, So our collective training that we've all had at Georgetown gives us the ability to be that really special person because it's not just about the education. It's about the way that we're grounded in the Jesuit traditions. And I just think that combination of a person who's taught that way is a winning formula for almost anything that we do out there. And so um, I'm really excited about what it means and what it can mean in the future. And I'm super excited for all of you and what you can go out there and do. Thank you so much. That was a great thing to be hopeful for. Um, To wrap up our interview on behalf of Georgetown University and the Center for Financial Markets and Policy, we would like to thank you so much, Ms. Erdos, for joining us. And it was a pleasure to learn from your experiences as a woman leader in business. We really enjoyed the um, opportunity to speak with you and also just learn more about your background and hear the advice that you have for all women and Georgetown students. We, you two made it very easy. Thank you for, uh, for allowing me to join. And Mina, thank you for setting all of this up for us. It's really, really exciting. Absolutely.